If you buy a case of Bibles, and they, they come uh, 12 to a case of medium print Bibles, hardcover, or you can get vinyl cover too, they're only $10 each. Okay. And they'll ship anywhere in the world. So um, individually they're $20, but if you buy a case of 12, you get them for $10 each. It's a very good investment. And that, that is a very reliable King James Bible. <clears throat> All right. Uh, hopefully that answered your question there, Disciple 4. Uh, we're going to move on. Um, we're actually going to skip to a couple of questions I saw here before the break. It was concerning about Haiti and where we're discussing about Santeria. And um, we have two questions, and I think we can uh, bring them together. Uh, one's from Maranatha777. The other one's from Beloved Princess. Maranatha writes, can you tell us, uh, can you tell us some specific uh, things about Santeria, and Beloved Princess writes, Pastor, my sister-in-law is into Santeria. Do they think that it is religious, and are they deceived into thinking that they are worshiping God? Well, basically, yes, they consider it what, you would, what they would call good witchcraft. And they think for some reason that, that the Catholicism in it sanctifies it. This is the, their mindset. Now, what they basically do in Santeria is they pray to various gods. So do the Catholics when they pray to saints. You, o you can only pray to God. If you're praying to something, you're making that something, whatever it is, a god. And if you're praying to an idol, that idol becomes a god to you. Even though it can't see, hear, speak, or think, or whatever, you have given it your power, your devotion, you have endowed that inanimate object with your resources and your faith, and therefore you are moved and changed by it. Your emotions are manipulated by it because you yielded them up. Now, in Santeria, which basically is voodoo from Africa with Catholicism modifying it, you have the votive candles. Uh, they generally set up a candle for every god they're going to pray to. And sometimes these gods are various uh, grotesque deities. There's, there's a whole string of them. But generally what they do for effect is they'll light one candle. And as they do it, a miracle takes place once they're really into this thing. Because, well, it's, it's a phony miracle, I should say. All the candles light by themselves. And they think, wow, I've got the power now. But where did it come from? You see, this is, this is real, corrupt, evil witchcraft. But they tried to use the Catholic relics. They set it up like a Catholic altar. It looks very similar to a Catholic altar. You walk into some of these, these big cathedrals and larger Catholic churches, they'll have a whole stand full of votive candles, kind of graduated higher. Each one's a little higher than the other. And... People come in and they put money in the box, they light a candle, and they pray to a saint, or they pray on behalf of somebody they want out of purgatory, whatever the case may be. Santeria, they're calling upon various so-called deities, lighting candles, chanting, um, mumbling things, and they've got certain magic phrases like the witches do when they have a witch's chant. You know, like Queen of Heaven, Queen of Hell, send your aid to the spell. And uh, our great God Pan, great God Pan, half of goat and half of man. And so I won't go through the whole thing. We don't need to know that. But that's basically what they do. They're calling upon different deities. And a lot of candle burning, candle lighting, chanting, and, and uh, just calling upon these different gods and goddesses. There, there's more to it than that. But I really wouldn't want to do a teaching session on Santeria. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for clarifying that up a little bit. Um, well, you just, she just write, Pastor, we don't need to know about that. How much information do we need to know? We need to know enough to where we know it's absolutely corrupt. <laughs> but if we go too, in, too far into it, I know it's intriguing. But if we go too far into it, it, it does open some doors to certain people that... It shouldn't. I mean, some people, you may be strong enough to just dismiss it. Others, it might work on them. And uh, I know that's hard to understand for some people, but uh, there are those that, 
the devil will use certain information against them. And it's better if they just don't know too much. We don't want to know every detail about it. We just want to know enough to where we can say, hey, this is satanic, this is of the devil. Um, and know enough about it to be able to work with people who are in it. Just enough to be able to get through that door of their mind and their heart to show them that we know what they're up to. And we know that the Lord Jesus, the true Savior, can take this all away. Amen. All right. We're going to go to um, next question here. <laughs> uh, they're having a little uh, bit of a laugh there in the room. Ever since, uh, ever since you came in the room, Savio, you've gotten people slowly to start saying Roger. So sounds like we're all part of like a big air, like airline. Uh, this is flight 212. Roger, over. Well, you know, before you can work in a tower at the airport, your name has to be Roger. Oh. These guys are always talking to Roger. Well, it's in the always tower. Roger, and it's always Roger, and it's always Wilco. So yeah, they're always talking to Roger and Wilco in the tower. So yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, amen. All right, we're going to go on to keep on, keep on rights. Question. You had said some things about the hexon, uh, hexagon, excuse me, but I noticed in a video that, uh, that the main shape in the snowflake is a hexagon a lot of the time. So therefore, God created that shape. What are your thoughts on this? Okay. Yes, God also created the rainbow and the rose and all these other things that people use in the occult. Actually, the hexagon is the 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 most perfect structure there is as far as strength and stability that's why the bees when they make a beehive you'll find that you get a honeycomb and it's got all these little hexagon wax uh perfect isn't it amazing how god gave them the intelligence to build those things amen and they're structurally very 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 strong oh, yes. but anyway um i also had the opportunity to look through an electron microscope at the Univers University of Wisconsin, and the professor, Dr. Cyrus, uh, I was talking to him about the, the greatness of the creation, and, and he showed me, of course, he, he wasn't a believer. These scientists claim they don't believe in the Lord. I don't know how they can miss it. But he showed me the cross-section of a leaf from a corn stalk, and you know how thin those leaves are. This was a cross-section. And it was made up of a vast network of hexagonal chambers, all six-sided. Yes, God made this. It's actually a, a perfect design for strength and stability. But what happens is Satan, the great counterfeiter, the one who tries to mock, imitate, and discredit God every way that he can, will latch onto these things and... You take a six-sided object, and it's called a hexagon. Hex meaning six. Uh, you find that in, even in chemistry. Uh, if for, the, for example, the alkane series, you know, methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane. And uh, you find that, that that word hex appears there, meaning six. Now, when the witches started using it, they, when Solomon began to go into his paganism, he developed a system using a star, two triangles. One was with one point up, and the other the one point down. The one with the one point up was the male element with the one point down, equilateral triangle, one point down was the female. And they were interlocked, showing the fertility, the power of fertility and union of male and female elements in sun worship and in moon worship as well. And then he came up with the six-pointed star. David never saw it. They called the Star of David. David never saw it. Solomon came up with it. And we know that in uh, witchcraft, it's the most powerful symbol there is. They stand, 13 coven members stand under an oak tree in a... Welcome back, everyone. See, I don't know what's been going on lately. I don't, I mean, it, it, now that was uh, experienced by everyone, or was that just us? Uh, oh, so everyone was experiencing that. You know, 